Hola community, welcome to another episode of Blender Today Live, the weekly gathering where we see, where we see what's new in Blender, if there is anything new. There are new things, there's a couple of announcements to make and there are new features, not as many as we usually do because as I mentioned we are in this special time where we are about to, what, two, three weeks away from uh, Blender? the next release 2.3.2 I am still thinking it's 2, 293 because two, there is 293 that is active 283 it's gonna be end of life in a couple of weeks actually in June so that's why I get the mix them up mixed up there's like five active releases going on at the moment 283, 293, 3.1 the active one 3.2 well, 3.1 is not only get active, it's just a stable one. But 3.2 and 3.3 alpha. So lots of uh, uh, love spread in many versions. Let's uh, jump straight on to the topic of the... Well, no, first, not the topic of the of the video. There is a, this... I, I got this tweet. Um, I saw this tweet on my timeline the other day and it's just awesome. It's by code.gov.fr like the government the French government um, it goes as welcome blender this software is now part of the list of recommended free software for, for French public agents and yes digital art teachers we're looking at you with a pointing even isn't that awesome so I didn't even know it was a thing like that uh, sir that some countries have like a dedicated um, list of software that they recommend for using that, that apparently a thing so if you are in France well congratulations viva la France but uh, because now you can use Blender because it's recommended by public uh, by, by the government if you um, are in your country you know of these kind of lists I think in the case of France it's even like people can um, they can you, you can nominate a software for that i think you can add it to the list of free software so yeah it's very interesting if you in your country or in your city even you know that there is something like that that people can recommend free software for others maybe it would be cool just have a look check and if you can uh, postulate blender if you think it's up to the standard no, it is. I know in in Argentina and many places the free software is like the first option. In Venezuela as well, the government had that it was pushing for using free software as much as possible. So let's hope more countries do that. Um, what else? The um, big topic of the week is that Google Summer of Code is it's raining so much in the Netherlands now that you almost forget that it's summer in some it, in this hemisphere in some parts the summer of code project the the, the the program by Google for that blender has been part for so many years now it's uh, blender foundation got accepted once again with four slots there is four topics that are gonna be uh, be worked on by students Let's remember that not every feature uh, it's uh, like guaranteed to make it in the end. It depends on the on the scope of the project and in the on, on the skills as well of the of the students, but also the dedication. Not so much on the skills, but more on like being there for like getting and pushing the project till the end, or not getting sidetracked with other areas. It's really. It's really hard to get uh, some projects to the end, but there is a good track record. I think in Blender, many of the features that you're using nowadays are there thanks to Google Summit of Code. So, what are you gonna? What can we expect? Well, one of the, the there is four projects. One of them is 3D text usability improvements. Um, the basically in making Blender 3D text uh, better usability. Like I don't know. Control B while you're selecting a text to make it bold, for example. Uh, well, making um, a better choose of fonts that will be pretty neat. I don't know if there is kerning, but Blender has a big issue with with kerning. You can read about all of that in the uh, blog post. There's the 
Plan Foundation page in the Google Summer of Code site where you can read about all the other ones. But uh, let's go quickly through the, other, through the other ones. Integrating many light sampling into cycles. You may uh, remember this because it's not the first time that it's mentioned actually. There was a patch going on about uh, some time ago and was it even a Google Summer of Code from some years ago? Mm, the project basically is to uh, improve performance and making cycles better when dealing with a lots of lights. Lots, as in hundreds, thousands of lights. Um, like imagine Coco, the, 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 the film by Pixar. Um, well, that would be a good target. <laughs> you remember that shot, amazing shot where they work into the city. It's not a spoiler. It's, it's uh, this, imagine the amount, because it's all, yeah, I don't know. I, I remember reading a bit about this. I think it was um, that they worked on, on getting multiple lights uh, support in the render engine. Imagine the nightmare of lighting this. If, I, I don't think they are all uh, like dynamic affecting each other. Otherwise would have been a pain. Um, but if they are, good job, it's amazing. Let's see, the um, next project, software simulation, physics stuff, yes, a new solver um, would be implemented in this project as part of the extended position based dynamics, XPBD. And if you Google for it, there is some videos on, uh, on, on YouTube where you can read more about this the extended position based for muscle uh, simulations and other types of soft bodies so pretty exciting if this manages to get um, to the end it will be amazing and uh, waveform drawing improvements um, you may if you use the video sequence editor you may know that the waveforms display could be better and also could be on by default uh, no, most software have it on by default. Well, the thing is, in Blender is still quite slow. Um, it's not uh, the, the calculation and the drawing process not uh, multi-thread parallelized properly. So it's uh, yeah, it's off by default just to prevent those things. Um, performance uh, mm, impact. I'm forgetting a bunch of words today. It's been uh, well, it's a whole weekend without talking to. <laughs> to anyone basically all right next uh that now that that it's all for for this week in terms of uh, updates as i said the uh, team is really busy making blender stable for the release and actually uh, there is a, a bot in the um, in the blender.chat website where it points and it mentions all the high priority bugs that are open and there is 30 open at the moment. Most of them are in EV and viewport. I guess it has to do with um, with um, like hardware compatibility and there were some crashes as well. Um, but the rest seems to be fine. Like animation rigging, there is one, one grease pencil, one core. So sculpt one, render cycles three, modeling has six, that's quite a lot. But um, not too bad. VFX and video, congrats. You have no high priority bugs. So the idea is that this gets as low as possible for the for the release. All right, I think I, um, I covered everything. So let's jump into what's new in Blender today. I, I never use the Blender today for that. Well, let's see what's new in Blender today in the video sequence editor. So. Let's see, in the video sequence editor, there is a there's a bunch of, of improvements in, in the handling of scenes because the Chris Pencil team is, is focusing on improving the video sequencer to use it together with uh, Chris Pencil um, to make storyboarding. So when you're making storyboarding, you could, there are many ways you can go about it, but because Chris Pencil is a 3D object, you want to um, like the quickest way to 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 make storyboards will be to have one scene strip to be its own scene basically which is at the moment but uh, a, a quick way to add remove and edit those strips like 
from the video sequence editor. So they are working on improvements on Blender itself and also on a add-on that will come ship with Blender, but um, it should make this, um, this easier, such as, for example, let's say you can now add a new scene and strip directly from the video sequence editor the well actually I, I have time today so let's let's see let's see it in action so from the video sequence editor if i go here and the scene i can choose to add a new scene because there is no other scenes i just open my uh, this blend file so i can do it from here and it's gonna make the scene so if i go here and then i add another scene it's now let me gonna uh, select the other scenes available or just create a new one and this makes it so much easier um a few weeks months ago the this option here in this oops if i move myself here um on the sidebar where you can pick the scene you can now also create a new scene copy linked and so on and so forth so that is uh super convenient if you choose uh, when you create a new scene you're gonna see that there is here some settings in the like the adjust last operation panel where you can choose if you don't want to be a new scene you can copy the settings linked or full copy um i think by default it does new i think so what if i have a 4k here and then i add a new scene this will be scene 5 and um, yeah by default is it's uh, it's new i think by default it should be copy settings um because copy settings copies co yeah copies the the one the the render size but it also copies the output so actually in the other scene if you add uh it's it's uh, it's tricky what do you think it should be the default um, not full copy, of course, no link copy, but instead of new, maybe copy settings. The new uses Blender default, so you have to go to each one and change the settings. Um, oh, ho hopefully this will be tackled when we have project settings. The concept of a project is non-existent in Blender at the moment. You, you, everything, each Blend file is its own world. There is no connection between them other than linking stuff. Um, so... Blender still still have to be aware of a concept of the, of the concept of a project, and then I think that could be moved into many of the operations that, especially scene handling and the video sequence editor, would benefit of a project settings, like the output of a project, the, the time, um, even the FPS. Right? If I set this to 60 FPS because I'm nuts, and then I create a new scene. And create a new scene. So scene eight. It's yeah, it says the 24 the FPS to 24. So okay, one last check. Sorry that I'm checking things now online. Uh, like while I'm streaming, but today there's not many new things. Okay, let's see if I choose a new scene and then I change the operator settings because this can be safe. Is it safe? Let go and uh, make a new scene. No, it doesn't save the settings. Okay, that could be one way to go if you could, if this was saved. But then, no, this also will be saved from the previous operator. So you don't want it. Huh. In an interesting... Okay, there needs to be some discussion. Let us know what you think in the about this feature. I think it should be copy settings. Um another improvement so you can create scenes but you can also delete scenes and there um well you can delete strips and there's an option where you can also delete the strip data this was introduced mainly for to be used together with the um with the scene strip so if i am here i'm animating and i want to get rid of, get rid of a a the strip but also the scene, because when you're storyboarding, you want to like quickly draw something. Okay, maybe not. This shot goes away. Okay, you can do delete or delete strip and data. And the shortcut is still um, X for, for deletion. 
and in the adjust operator operators you can in there <laughs> you can and uh, toggle the delete data the right click menu also shows both settings if you want to do it directly from there all right and the same way you can add and create you uh, you can create and you can remove scenes you can also swap or change in blender sequence editor there is this shortcut one of my favorites is the the <laughs> shortcut c like the the c as in yeah c i use it when i have for example an image sequence and i want to or an image in general and you want to change the source you press c to change and then you change the path files this way and it's uh, super convenient now you can also uh, change scenes so when you are in the when you have a scene strip selected you can change the scene and choose another one basically just point it to a different one um, just so it, it's a bit more complete the whole workflow of adding removing and changing one other feature and related to scenes is a, a bit of more info regarding did I break there? Yep, I crashed Chrome. Yes, okay, force quit. Uh -huh. All right, I killed everything, killed the, the, the everything, the planet. Okay, it's back. It's the chat back. <laughs> um, all right, I don't see you, but I am hoping you're still there. The... Um, Sounds at that low. Should I put it higher? Is that okay? I made it a bit louder now. Okay. Um, while you let me know, the feature that I wanted to point out is that now you can uh, see a bit more data about your sounds, such as the sample rate and the channels. So if it's stereo or a mono or what other channels it has, if multi 5.1 or so. So the um, this will be displayed in the in the settings of the source in when you have an audio strip selected. So let me go here, full screen, and jump to the other side. There you go. So you should see like sample rate, which I think it it's written sample space rate, right? Not sample rate. Maybe we need to fix that. And steady doesn't need to be all caps yelling. <laughs> um, so a little UI tweak to the to be done there. Mm, other than that, that is it for the video sequence editor. How's the chat going? Is it okay? I I know I I cut the music. I feel a bit empty inside. More than usual. <laughs> no, like okay, let's see. I there I have I want need to have something in the background all right let's move on to the next topic of this um, here the next topic in the user interface is two changes one of them related to what something we saw last week last okay let me ha make it louder I hope now it's loud. Uh, okay, the next change that we saw um, last week was the removal of a feature. The remove the remap data block usages operation. It was just a UI level change. In the right click menu, you would see that the yeah you would you wouldn't see the the option to remap users. It was fairly advanced and it was removed to make things a bit. Um, to, to make the context menu not as, as crowded and messy. Still messy, but some features will not simply just go away. So this this has been removed, uh, reverted, sorry. So now the feature is back and we have homework to do to make the context menu not suck. Um, basically, <laughs> in the in the outliner, this context menu, it's just that sometimes it has a bit too many, like remap users. That's, actually it's not too bad because it's under this id data but i don't i'm not a huge fan of having a menu called id data i think it's a bit too 
obscure <laughs> for some for, for things that are more like um, commonly used right this sounds very technical oh besides the fact that no operator has a tooltip they're all undocumented operators why okay this is documented mm, okay you know this is something if you want to help blender development this is a low um low threshold um feature that you can work on just and uh, looking for these operators and add some tooltips to them next feature is a small change in the label of the nodes uh, for hue saturation value in textures and shading i think yes in shadings are in textures so these um these changes it's only for user level however because search is uh, uses the name of the nodes now you can search for value and you're gonna get the hue saturation value node whereas before it was called hue slash saturation terrible name just legacy from the past because even in other nodes that do the same in, in the compositor for example you would um you would have um, the hue saturation value node and in some other <laughs> uh, node editors you would have hue saturation it's a bit inconsistent there is work being done for blender 4.0 like long time from now but there is some breaking changes in some nodes that um like just just changing the labels of some of the options in the nodes in order to make those consistent there are breaking changes that need to happen and that will take place because you can break api and stuff in blender 4.0 but if you ever notice how the mix node or the some nodes have an output called factor and someone uh, like FAC, like factor, I don't know how to say the word without sounding <laughs> that I'm um, not saying a nice word. The um, other change, it's in another topic, which is the grease pencil area so in grease pencil there is a new mode for the time modifier the, the offset so the time modifier allows you to maybe loop an animation well now there is a new mode that allows you to ping pong an animation so you can go back and forth with the yeah with the animation so you can make loops more easily it's just uh yeah it's a modifier it's called uh, time the, the time offset and the mode here it says bounce but uh, this is an old screenshot the new mode it's called ping pong so yay for that super handy actually this was made wait where is it where is it here here thank you Alice. frog stomp it's uh, working on a bunch of stuff from the for the for grease pencil um, let's continue. Mm, scarves. Well, now let's do a little bit of a pop popery because there is like one <laughs> feature per um, per section. So one of them curves in the um, the experimental feature of curves. Now the sculpt brushes support pressure. So if you're using a pen, now you can change. You can affect, for example, the um, um, the amount of particles that you draw or the or the length of a particle hair with the pressure of your pen so yay for randomness and pressure sensitivity another change this is a, an optimization done in the library overrides so if you ever used the mesh deform modifiers or some of the other deform modifiers you may be familiar with the binding the concept of binding so this calculation is a way to well, bind your um, your data to this modifier to use it later on. Thing is, this can be very heavy, as in the files can become super huge. And library override was um, was um, like recalculating this thing, basically storing it twice. So one is in the original file, if I understand correctly. So now it's going to skip it if it, if the binding is already present in the original modifier so 
this has been done for the mesh deform modifier, corrective smooth, surface uh, deform, laplacian deform, and it should make your files with library overrides much smaller. So you, because you only have the binding data once. So yay for that. Speaking of optimizations, um, and not only optimizations, but actually improvements to the thumbnailing of EXR files. So the EXR files have the internally they have their own um, thumbnails. So the um, this improvement by Harley makes it so when there is already a thumbnail present on those EXR files, it's going to use that. So it doesn't have to calculate it. But if it has to calculate it, it will still you be um, not only faster, uh, around twice as fast or even more depending on the files, but also it will um, be able to get thumbnails from big files and which is not wasn't possible before it used to be uh, skipped altogether. But also it should way, use way less RAM. Internally, it seems to be using um, OpenAXR itself to create the thumbnails and, uh, and when there is a need for one. So yay for that, for optimizations. What else? Um, I'm looking at the chat. Chrome, why not Firefox? Um, because I tried to give Firefox a chance some time ago and it didn't uh, sync the, the settings with my phone and with the computer. But this was many years ago, so probably they do it now, nowadays. But uh, that, that's what made me stick with uh, the with, uh, Chromium-based stuff. Browsers. Um, what else? Cycles X. Where is Cycles A? Cycles S is lost. No, no. Cycles X um, was the temporary name for Cycles for the new improvements in Blender 3.0. So Cycles X was just a working name. Um, it's still Cycles. Nowadays it's just Cycles. So whatever, whenever you see Cycles after Blender 3.0, that is Cycles X. Okay, a few more changes in the Python API. One of them, math utils, they has a few new functions to convert color spaces. So you can convert between linear, sRGB, XYZ, linear uh, and 709, correct 709 and ACS. Mm. What else? So this Python stuff. So it's in the API. If you use, if you make um, add-ons or scripts by yourself, this should help. And it should also help that the image save and the save render um, Python API entries are now consistent with the operator operator to save. So each one had the, it used to have their own definition. So whenever a new feature was added in one place, it should be added to the other to the operator and to the um, yeah to the other entries basically to the API. Now that's no longer the case because it, there are only one set of settings that are going to be shared. So it makes it consistent from now on. So if you use this operator and you notice that there were things missing, such as multi-layer support, stereo saving or color manage, proper color management. Now that should no longer be the case. That should be fixed. OK, I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover that there was to cover this week. There is two things to be excited about, though. This is in the experimental section. Let's uh, remember that some things in Blender are being developed, but they take long time, such as new renderers or optimizations to the renderers that we use and love, such as Eevee. So if you follow Blender today, you may be familiar with the, the fact there is a new EV in the works is the EV Next. So EV Next again is the working name. The final product is going to be in EV, just like Cycles X. Okay, so what is uh, something to be excited about is that there is a new velocity module added to EV Next. What does it mean? It means that the calculate there is a new velocity calculation basically what does it mean well it means the motion blur will be better will be faster but the limitation 
that Blender's EV motion blur currently has, the biggest one to me is that it doesn't show in the viewport. It only shows on render. So that's no longer the case. The new one should be visible. There is no uh, changes to the user. This is all under the hood, but the code is there to support uh, to support that basically. The, it's a huge improvement, which was only used for motion blur. Yeah, the, the velocity was only used for motion blur and only available during render. This one, it should give the correct uh, camera projection. Oh, for any camera projection type. Hmm. Just the fact that we are talking about camera projections, you know, gives me hope for one day fish eye. And it's also compatible with displacement. Um, so that also gives hints to like a future improvements in Eevee and it's good to see there are the work that is being done now it's looking is keeping in consideration those huge new features coming up such as displacement and last but not least uh, also related to Eevee if you had many crashes well most of those crashes are often related to unsupported hardware so that shouldn't happen anymore, at least the crash part. It may not work still, but at least it's going to let you know why. Um, the um, Remember that even next, it will require new... Um, it will raise the limit of OpenGL eventually when it arrives. So it's good to, to have this clear from the beginning. And that is all for me with the news in Blender related stuff. So let's go to blender.community to see if there is any uh, any questions from the community there that we can answer here. What is this? Oh wow, there the thread for Blender OI, the live stream of Blender OI, the, the Spanish version of Blender today, it's already done by Josu Manzana. Thank you, Josu. But uh, let's focus in the English one <laughs> at the moment. And this one is made by Sansuls. So thank you for creating this um, the blog post. And I'm going to be answering here. All the comments have votes, most of them. So let's say I'll try to answer all of this as much as possible. Um, okay. <clears throat> Um, first question by Emrekan Oeskan. Hello, Pablo. Thank you for the stream. Thank you for watching. I wanted to ask if we can please get the ability to shift A, like add, in the shader and geometry nodes editor to search for the math operations itself instead of always adding a math node and then change, changing it to the needed math operations. Example, shift A, fraction. Um, Yes, well, there, that feature exists in a different shape. It would be great to have it as part of the search. I think the search itself, it needs so much, um, it needs to be rethought. In Blender, there is currently in the node editors, there is three ways of searching for, for a node. So one of them is the Shift A search. So this one is the worst one in my, if you ask me, because math just is just math. Multiply doesn't show anything. So this is the, this is the, the official one and is the worst one. The second, um, the second mode is less bad, but it's still not great. If you um, press F3 to search, you can actually search inside of the uh, section. So for example, you have the um, uh, the math but at least you know where it is okay it's in the utilities menu it's in vector okay and then if you use the right the um, node wrangler it also will show some of the options here in the search so okay this is less bad because at least it tells me where in utilities um but the best one is actually not even in the so let's say i have an input value the best one is that you can drag from here and this is the feature complete because you drag a socket, drop it and then if you do like multiply it will tell you, it will show all those options that are inside of a node so the tech is there technically right? it just needs to be unified because 
if this can do it, this is even filtering by the node, by the socket type. So it's even more, it was smarter than just a regular search. So the tech is there. The building blocks are there. Community, please, maybe um, investigate this. Jump, go, come into Geometry Nodes, the, the channel in Blender chat if you need help for, from developers. But uh, it would be great to unify this thing and just have this search when you do this search that would be amazing um but yeah so the the yeah it, it's there but it's not there next alexei says hey pablo would it be possible to combine the composer and the scene from the video sequence editor for example so that in the composer you could it would be possible to add a scene node and all the changes would immediately be displayed in the sequencer editor um, yes, but no, um, it's, I once asked Ton about this like many, many years ago when we were in the old building, I was working on one of the DVDs, like imagine how old this is, and, and uh, I remember Ton saying that it's, um, it was virtually impossible, everything is possible of course in open source, but it was virtually impossible because of the way Blender was designed, the 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 pipeline. How how does it go? The sequencer is always, um, it's always in in. Uh, is it before or after? Basically, the order in how things are calculated was messing up stuff, and it, that changing that would change would have huge implications, like going to the past and talking to your own self the past um but yeah it would be amazing if that would be possible but yeah this in the compositor you will have a scene node and all the changes would immediately be displayed but a scene node and then what what is a scene node because blender doesn't know about scenes he knows about the compositor knows about view layers or render layers in a scene so what is a scene node like yeah what is it and also what which changes will be displayed in the sequencer when you press f12 what happens first is it the sequencer result that shows up in the uh, sequence on in the compositor no it's the other way around the compositor render shows up in the sequencer so there is something there and it needs it needs design and a lot of love <laughs> because it's uh, what Tom said, it was. Uh, it seemed to be something very hard, and someone for a core developer to look into, probably. Uh, Glenn says, "Hey Pablo, is there any way to rotate while to rotate while duplicating lots of objects? I can zoom out after selecting an object to copy, now making it almost impossible to work with lots of small items." Uh, no, I remember you asked this, I think, uh, last week, um, or in the Spanish version, I think. And no, the. Uh, duplicating it's not just the one task is shift D is uh, is uh, two tasks in one is duplicate and move and the moving is not is a model operation so it doesn't support um, rotating around basically you can press shortcuts you can press like middle uh, you can press middle click to 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 lock to certain access and that's one of the reasons why rotate is not allowed because you yeah middle click is for for that um if the axis lock is changed to shift middle mouse button then we could use pan rotate yeah but the problem is that then if i press g press g this is moving according to the view if i'm if i rotate then what happens am i moving it according to this view and then this view Maybe it could work, but uh, it's one of those things that need to needs to be tested to to work. Um, but yeah, would be nice mm, if that can be tackled, like the the view transform. Mm, next. Hey Pabs, hope you're having a swell time over there. Yes, super swell and rainy. My question is, why isn't the state of the outliner saved when saving a file? Every time we open a file, all of the collections have their drop-down state as active, 
This seems like a minor issue, but having to deactivate the drop-down state of all the collections every time gets annoying. It almost defeats the aesthetic importance of having collections. Uh, that sounds like a bug to me. The drop-down state should be stored in the in the outliner data, in the editor data, right? And the editor data should is load when you... Yeah? Is it the case? Like, uh, if I have a collection here with the light and I close this and I have this. Okay, so the collection is closed. If I save this somewhere here in the desktop, close Blender, open Blender again. And the collection is closed. If I keep this cube as active, and then, okay, let's save the object, close, open Blender again, because it opens so fast. Hey, the close status is preserved. Let's close this one, save, go back, open, untitle. Hey, it is saved. Mm, I don't know. Okay. Let's continue. Maybe I got it wrong. Let me know if it's I did it. I, get, I understand wrong. <clears throat> Hello, Pablo. There are three selection modes in the Blender, in edit in Blender in editing mode. These are vertices, edges, and faces. Would be a good idea to add a new selection mode. Let me. I didn't even read. Is it gonna be island selection? Let's see. That's uh, one of the most requested features. Uh, it would be a good idea to add a new selection mode there, selecting entire sections of the model. It already exists and it can be used. Yes, it's the L key. I see nothing wrong about this. I think it, if pe enough people are requesting it, unless you are always the same person, I remember a lot of people asking for it. And it's even there in the UV editor. Uh, you can select uh, islands. So if you have... Um, yeah, you can duplicate. But if you have, for example... This section ripped out you can select and it's already there so I think why not we even have an icon for it already um, probably should be a different icon but yeah why not mm. and it would be this like does it need to have anything coded because it's like a mode that it will use already the the L shortcut Hmm. How should it look though? Because vertex selection makes the vertices stand out, edge selection makes the edges stand out, and faces the faces, and also with the overlay for the middle, um, the center of the face. So how should the island look? Should it look like a like like faces? Yes. Hmm. Next. But yeah, I agree with uh, with this uh, idea. Should be there. Come on, it's it's in UV editing, and so many people are using. I'm used to pressing L, but uh, but yeah, why not? Two weeks ago, Tim says I asked when the geometry nodes editor was going to be added to the editor switching pie menu, but you seemed confused about what I was asking. I attach a screenshot of what I mean. Also, if Elon Musk buys Blender, will we finally get light linking? No, but you would probably get like NFTs or some crap like that. <laughs> um, okay, what is this? That's uh, the I don't know this this editor switch. There is no editor switch in Blender built in. There is uh you, you, you yeah no there's no editor switch. Um. Also, having drop downs for the node editors uh, for like for the pie menus is generally not a practice that Blender follows. Having uh, the, the menu should be like a one click uh, movement, so shoot, uh, drag up, down, left, right, but not the not having to open it. I see other people using other software that they open the pie menu and they they just wait. They have to read a Bible of a bunch of options and then drop down and then it opens another one. Um, I wonder if... I don't know if Blender should copy that. It feels slow. Whenever, whenever I see other people using other software um, that have these pie menus with like tons of options, it doesn't look fast to me. 
Um, but maybe you can with shortcuts in Blender, right? Like, um, like um, if you know that the shortcut is like it's number six, then you do whatever shortcut six and or n, and then move. Okay, um, but this is not an OFI, like it's not built in Blender. Mm, Sanul Sansul says, "Hey Pablo, how is it going? It's great. Will there be a proxy system in Blender?" Um, like maybe an extension of to the asset browser, like a way to show a low poly version of the geometry in viewport by high poly only in the render. There might be items for this, but a feature that's related to performance and optimization might be better if it's built into Blender. Thanks. Um, I I don't know. If, I don't think there are any plans, um, like official plans to get something like that built in Blender. But I can, and I think it, should, it would be very useful to have for, for sure. But the moment I start thinking about it, I already have questions. So many questions. Like, okay, where could it be? If I have a cube, yeah, if I have Suzanne, and I want Suzanne to have multiple levels of details, okay, what can it do? It could be like an a object level or is a mesh level. And then you have different meshes inside like you could load multiple like the cube is this how how would you implement it because as just asking for levels of details is a bit um leaves too many questions open like is it a object level that you can choose multiple meshes that depend on the object how what does each level has like each level has its own uv maps if it's its own entire new object then it has well everything um and i think this, this would be the first time that an object has more than one um, data block dependency if you pack this file all the object le all the level of details come with it if you um yeah the attributes can you change this on the fly if okay what if instead of the here in the mesh data it was in the collection so a collection could have its own level so i add this to a new collection and then the collection itself could have levels of details and then how would you manage it is it can you i guess it's on the collection level to make things a bit more flexible because if you, if you have only one object that you can change the uh, the level of detail then you if you have a character you, that has 20 objects and you have to go through all 20 so i guess it's not an object level setting it's not a um it, it's just a collection setting maybe that you could have okay this is a proxy collection or this is a collection what is this a property of the collection where you can choose level of details you have level one and then in level one, this dupli, right? This um, like instancing. So if I if I add here a UV sphere and I make it instance. No, let's do it with an empty. So if I have an empty, then you choose collection one for the low level, and then collection two for. Can you do you let me? I can't even. <laughs> It doesn't let me select it, but uh, it shows in the list. Anyway, this will be like the high level and this is the low level. Maybe this will be simpler to implement. So it's in the instancing level. How would it be? How would it become? Maybe like maybe it's like a material, like a list of things where you can choose a collection for that uh, level. Do they have an order? Yes. An ID? You see, there's so many questions. Um, so many questions. So, um, a proposal. Maybe there are proposals already on right-click select. Um, gotta check. Like, level... Level detail? Level of details. LOD. Okay, there's two proposals. One from three years ago. Hi, Pablo. Oh, you're even saying hi to me. Hello. Um, 
And so it's the feature request, but not the detail how would it be implemented in object level, collection level, instancing level. Um, you see, sometimes people say like some like there are many proposals in right click select that don't get implemented. Not all proposals are detailed enough. And that is the that's where the power of talking with the rest of the community comes. That you can say to the person whoever posted the 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 proposal is like, hey, you're missing this information. What happens in this and that and that scenario? Um, I think that's something we are missing. Maybe try to give feedback. I don't like here, for example, Rosario Resato says we can put this video in your proposal, like LOD in another software. And that could be a reference. However, each software is its own planet, so you can't copy one on one. You shouldn't copy one on one. Also, you can't, even if you wanted, you, you couldn't. So, okay. Next. Um, you can do level of details with geometry nodes. Yeah, you can already because you have the East viewport. You have a switch node, which is a bit limited, the switch node at the moment, but you could if you wanted to. Um, yeah. In the here at the studio, we have an add-on that does that. We wrote an add-on forever ago and just basically use uh, naming conventions like um, yeah, character dot high dot low, and that you switch it with an add-on. But uh, yeah, it's very in-house, and you have to rethink it every time. Okay, next. Um, let's uh, yeah, let's do all of them. I think I managed. I started the five minutes later, so. Prince of Sloth says, "Hola, Pablo. Is it uh, hola?" It's a change to UV packing, a part of the upcoming UV improvements. The current UV packing algorithm does not place UV islands inside big holes or bigger islands. I am currently using add-ons for packing, so it isn't a higher priority feature, I guess. Well, it's just as high as the rest of the UV improvements. I don't know anyone working on it at the moment other than the module itself. Um, they have a long list of improvements but i don't think um anyone is working on the actual packing algorithm parts of it you know what you can do though you could propose you can ask the add-on developers if they're open to like um to uh, share it with blender to make it part of blender to improve blender because there are not enough developers working in the uv sides of blender so if you see an add-on developer that has this add-on already for five years and already made its money's worth, maybe it wants to donate the code or maintain a new version of it in uh, in the Blender for, for everyone. I think it's not a bad thing to ask. Many, many, many add-on developers, they make add-ons because they don't know that they can contribute to Blender so easily. And sometimes it's not so easy. You have to, yeah, you have to, your code has to be up to a level or you're using a library that is not open source or you just like to do things your way and not the blender way in terms of the code quality and stuff so it doesn't so no, it's not always compatible but hey no um i would say ask most add-on developers say they maybe didn't even consider that oh wow actually i could put this into blender and it will be maintained and part of blender for everybody and i would be doing a good Thing for the world and getting the rest of blender right okay next <laughs> um sam p23 says hi pablo any updates on the new g grease pencil field tool using booleans not that i know but maybe no not that i know the team is currently working on the storyboarding tools uh, for NEC, by the way, there is another blog post that was done uh, that we published last week on Blender.org in the Blender events of 2022. So the first one, big one, is going to be NEC Festival on the 13th and 18th of June, where, speaking of Gris Pencil, Daniel Martinez Lara will be uh, there to demo and answer any questions you have about Gris Pencil, but also demo the storyboarding workflow that they're working on. So that will be pretty exciting. And there is also SIGGRAPH in Vancouver in August. 
and of course the Blender conference at the end of October, celebrating 20 years of Blender being open source. Super cool. All right. <clears throat> Anura says, hey Pablo, a few days ago I made a proposal of adding a special kind of tooltips in Blender's Outliner. Please give your thoughts on this idea. Let's see. Object previews in the Outliner. This is an idea to make the Outliner a bit smarter, to organize the objects in a scene. Um, <clears throat> I Would this what, be with a delay, maybe? I don't know if I would personally have it enabled, especially because it, unless the asset already exists and already <clears throat> has a thumbnail, it could be a bit slow to calculate, right? If you have to calculate it on the fly, um, I wouldn't, I would personally not have it enabled all the time, or at least not on hover immediately, like on hover, maybe after a while you wait and then it expands. Um, but not all the time, I think. Not a huge fan. Or at least not as big as this, but maybe it's just part of the regular uh, thumbnails. So, for example, if you have this thumbnail with the text, which... <laughs> look at the great... This is next level tooltips. The button says exclude from view layer with capital view layer. And the tooltip is the same, but without the capital. Which is wrong because it's not a view layer. It's a. It's, it's not just a, a view layer. You know what I mean? It's the view layer is an actual thing that should be capitalized always. So it's even wrong. It's twice and wrong. Um, but anyway, this tooltip is quite big. You could have a little thumbnail on the right, left. Mm, but yeah, maybe a round of design tricks to that idea. Ricardo Giovanetti says, Hi Pablo, hope you're fine. Have you seen this AI based application in development named Dal E2? Yes, I have. It is scary. <laughs> it's an AI that can draw anything you ask it for. It's terrifying and amazing at the same time. What do you think about it? I think it's amazing. It's just, um, I, I actually, the other day I needed it. I have some ideas for the Blender conference uh, logo that we have to still think of and some. Some artwork that we... Oh no, and also the level, the Blender events. Here, I wanted to have a picture. And it's like, I have this idea in mind. But I didn't know how to make it. So <laughs> I needed Dali for that. But yeah, no, it's... Um, I don't think it's open source, is it? You have to pay for 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 it, which makes sense. Um, but yeah, what is the question actually? What do you think about it? Ah, I think it's great. It's awesome. For concepts making and stuff it will be just open a whole new uh, type of artwork you know like the you would say like generative art is one one type or um yeah painting just imagining examples tied to a technology is a bit scary in a way because it means that if the technology is not open source and it keeps changing when you give it a prompt today, it's not going to be the same as in five years. So maybe that gives more value to NFTs because it sticks uh, in time. I don't know. But uh would be cool if it was open source. Maybe it is. I'm not sure. Next. Hey, Paolo, any update on the Claymation add-on by Antonio and Daniel? For me, it's the most exciting thing to come to Blender. Um, No. I need to ask Danielle what uh, about it, but no. Um, this, if I search for Peppeland, maybe he wrote something new. But you can ask him on uh, Twitter. He's pretty pretty active there all the time. So maybe he did something. No, haven't seen anything uh, lately. But that add-on will be part of uh, Blender. The idea is that it should be part of Blender. Mm, is there anything planned to make hello in Yassi? Is there anything planned to make VDV, like open VDV better? Actually, they can't work inside of a cube of volume, for example. Um, do you... I guess it's a limitation. Oh, it's, it's a volume inside of another volume, so multi-volume. 
Um, apparently there is a bug report about it already done for half a year. So I would say uh, maybe patience. I don't know where the limitations is and if the developers... Okay, Brecht already saw it and he is the main developer behind Cycles. So he... There must be a reason why. <laughs> well, the, sometimes it's libraries, you know, Open OpenBDB, it's also an external library. So not everything depends on, on Blender. In this case, on, on Cycles, I guess. But uh, no, sorry, I don't have any news regarding that. And I'm way over time. I think it's uh, five past one hour. So I'm going to call it a day because my face is getting lit by this lamp, which means the light outside is not enough. And uh, <laughs> it's dark, rainy, and I have to go home because I'm going to work on the... I'm going to make the live stream, but in Spanish for my Latinos and Hispanic community. Let's uh, wrap this up and uh, gather next week. But when is next week? 30th. Okay, 30th is fine. This week, actually, there is a holiday on Thursday, but that doesn't affect Blender today. The next one also, but the one after. So, oh, wow, we are in 94. Yeah, 95, 96, 97. I'm going to skip one Monday because we're going to be at NSC. Like I, like I mentioned, in the 13th of June is a Monday and I'm not going to be able to do the live stream for that. So one week is going to skip, but I will try to remind you. Okay, I hope I answer as much as uh, possible. I, I thought, um, I think I didn't miss anything. I'm looking at the chat. Is it okay? Mm, that's it. Yeah. The outliner change is weird. Yeah, I'm using Master, the latest version of Master. Okay, let's continue in the comments. I will call it the day and see you next week about the same time for another episode of Blender Today. Same week, same, same place, same time. Forgetting how this to do this thing. Okay. Have fun. Have a great week. Happy blending. See you next week. Bye.